At an exclusive girls' boarding school, a 16-year-old student records her most intimate thoughts in a diary. The objects of her growing obsession are roommate Lucy Black and disturbing new classmate Ernessa. watching the Canadian Film Review on Press Plus One. I'm here today with Trevor Alberts, my co-host, and I'm Kinda Mardambe, and we're at the Landmark Cinema's Globe Theatre in Calgary, and today we're reviewing The Moth Diaries. It's Mary Heron's latest film. Um, I'm a big Mary Heron fan. I love all of her previous work, uh, American Psycho, The Notorious Betty Page, I Shot Andy Warhol. Um, she does a fantastic job with complex characters. Um, who are struggling with a lot of inner demons and that's exactly what this one is about as well. And she's going into the vampire, you know, which is completely original at this time in history, <laughs> but yeah. in a very fresh way. Uh, she's actually going back in time and really reviewing that gothic aspect of vampires. Think of it as Mean Girls meets Edgar Allan Poe, right? <laughs> Speaking of the girls, this is a very girl-heavy cast who were all very young, talented actresses who brought an astonishing amount to the table. To me, the standout was Lily Cole, who played Ernessa. Right from the very first time you see her on screen, she's got this amazing presence about her that it just exudes a, a, a beautiful creepiness. Yeah. You know? I think that this has a fantastic potential for a, a large commercial appeal to it, particularly because it's about young people and a young story. Yeah, it, it's going to find an audience, I think, for sure. Uh, I'm a big horror movie fan, and I certainly found a lot of appeal in it, but I also saw a lot of similarities in it to a lot of other films I've seen, like this allegory of especially the female coming of age is very common ground for, for horror stories. And I really felt that what was missing from it was this element of the, the lead character, Rebecca, becoming completely unglued. Yeah. Right, like she, she's gradually getting worn away by this creature who comes in and starts stealing her friends and presumably killing people left, right and center. Meanwhile, Rebecca's kind of, you know, she's upset and paranoid, but it doesn't really seem like it's affecting her the way that it should. Yeah, right? and, and she doesn't, she, as the end, when it comes to the end, she com it completely drops off as far as the storyline goes. It has a very to the point ending. Mm -hmm. And I felt a lot more could have been done with that character development and how far she has to go emotionally to um, to fight up against Ernessa's character who's very strong, very stoic and very frightening. I'm gonna give this one three stars because although it was a great story and the cast of young actresses was really fantastic, I still felt the ending felt fell quite short. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. And I think a lot of that came from the, the fact that um, the lead character didn't quite go crazy enough, yeah. <laughs> almost, right? Yeah, she was too sane. Yeah, well, there, there were several moments in the film where she looks like she might be contemplating suicide because Ernessa is trying to convince her to do so. Mm -hmm. But you don't buy it, you know, as a viewer, there's no way that you think she's going to do that. Mm -hmm. So for that reason, I also gave it a three stars. If you'd like to read our reviews of The Moth Diaries, go to the Press Plus One Canadian Film section. And we want to hear what you have to say, so let us know what was the last great Canadian film you watched. <laughs>